Archbishop, thank you for joining us on Sky News today. Now, you've launched a report along with the Archbishop of York about how we need to think, rethink, you say, reimagine how we provide care mm. in the UK. And you say in the report, there's a clear Christian vision for an issue which affects every person. Many people might be wondering what a political issue like this has got to do with religious leaders like you. I don't think it's a political issue. Um, it's obviously a political issue because everything's political, but this is one that's deeply about how we care for people, uh, how we love our neighbours, how we value people who the world around us doesn't value very much, people who need care. And therefore, nothing could be more ethical, more moral, or more deeply embedded in the Christian tradition, part of the earliest part of Christianity, even in the first 30 or 40 years of Christianity, was that there was this unusual community that cared mm. equally for everyone, mm. not just for the people mm. who were strong and rich. And Archbishop, I've read the report and there are many references to Bible quotations and to mm. Christ's teachings within uh, the report and, and the Commission's work. In a country where most people are not Christians, wrapping up these proposals in religious language, do you fear in any way that that might alienate people, some people? It probably may, but it would be very surprising if the church produced a report that didn't go to the heart of Christianity mm. and to the Bible. Mm. And to say that what we're putting forward is in very deeply embedded in the Christian heritage mm. of this country, even if not in many people's current belief. And, and Archbishop, I'm going to get to the report in, in a moment, but do you feel you had to come up with this report on social care? Because as you actually write in the report, for 25 years, politicians have not grasped the nettle. It's been talked yeah. about, but it hasn't been solved. We even had a Prime Minister in Boris Johnson a few years ago who promised a plan to fix social care. He announced plans for tax rises. Were you dismayed when that came to nothing? Not dismayed, but certainly it's disappointing. Um, though one has to recognise that politicians have enormously difficult questions of priority. Mm. But this is one of the most fundamental questions affecting our country, morally and ethically, but also because it has ramifications and effects all over the country. It has effects on hospitals, it mm. has effects on families, mm. it has effects on people who need care, people with learning difficulties, people who are elderly. I mean, we all know people who need care and support, many of us, help with caring with people. Do you think politicians haven't done a good enough job in this area? Oh, I'm not going to get into that sort of blame game. Mm. Um, it's not about whether they've done a good enough job or not. We are where we are. What can be done about the future? And what we're trying to do in this report is not just say something must be done, mm. but to say here are some real ideas to look at. And what is for you the game-changing idea in the report for you? The game-changing idea is what we call in the report a national covenant on care. And we all, many people, will know about the armed forces covenant. Covenant is a, a word that is not the same as contract. Covenant is the offering of a commitment to a person or a group of people without expecting to get anything back. Now, of course, you do when you care. You get a lot back. But the National Covenant of Care is saying, as a nation, can we promise people that they will be cared for mm. when circumstances turn against them? But you do need to get political leaders on side to do that. That's right? exactly right. And that's why we've put forward really solid plans for how this can be organised and really solid plans for what it might look like. And they, some of them are about what government must do, some about local government, mm. 
some about families and some about institutions like the church. It's quite critical of the church as it is about other institutions. To be a bit contrarian about it, 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 you could argue it's a bit motherhood and apple pie in the sense that it's, I've read it, it's hard to disagree with anything in that report. What I struggled a bit with was how it actually took us forward. It takes us forward because it tries to set a, a values. What tends to happen in government over care is they say we've got this money for care, how are we going to spend it? This turns the thing entirely mm. the other way around mm. and says we've got these needs, what does it look like if we meet them? And then says we now have to work out how to fund that. Mm. But I mean you don't go shopping and say oh, I've got a £10 note in my pocket, how can I spend it? You say, I need to get some milk, some bread, some... How much do I need to afford to get these things? You, you've got to put what you want to do ahead of how you fund it. But you accept that, and I know that you didn't go into detail, you, you say explicitly in the report, I don't want to go into detail about how to pay for it, because a debate only concerned with funding misses the point. But you also acknowledge that funding is a critical issue and you do talk in the report about the principles of funding. How do you see it on the principle? Do you think it should be general taxation? Do you think it should be about people uh, using their personal assets? Do you think we should pay more for social care? First of all, just to remember, when you say you, we're talk you're Sorry, talking the about commission. the whole church yes. Yes, and the commission. I didn't write the report. I couldn't no. have written Sorry. such a good one. Um, and it's led by Professor Anna Dixon with um, years and years and years of professional experience in this area and the Bishop of Carlisle the same. Um, yes, there is going to be a significant cost. I mean, the, the government, we're online with the government uh, and the House of Lords report in uh, December that said we need uh, £8 billion as an urgent need and another seven year mm. by year over time mm. to start to approach these problems. Um, they've done the heavy lifting on the numbers and their numbers seem to make sense. Uh, the uh, change uh, that was subsequently abandoned in the um, uh, national insurance rate mm. would have produced about 12 billion. So mm. that's mm. more or less in the same ballpark. It is going to have to come from taxation, which means from all of us. Mm. But it also, there is going to have to be responsibility for individuals. Mm. But it has to be seen to be just and fair and to meet the values we want as a society. Mm. It's no use saying we can do it on the cheap because we can't. And so the report makes it clear, here are the values here's the implication of the values, here's the need for the national covenant and links in to other reports that have been done over the last many years. And, and just to be clear Archbishop, so you feel that the, not the burden, I mean the point you're making in the report is that this happens to all of us exactly. at some point in our lives and so this should be a collective societal endeavour. Do you think the burden should fall on people's estates, perhaps hard-earned estates, perhaps inherited estates, or on general taxation or a mix? It's a mix. It's, it's a mix. always going to be a, a mix, and if we go back to some of the past examinations of this, uh, there's a cap on what, the suggestion of a cap on what should be spent by individuals. Those weren't done by the church, but there's been a lot of thought going into this, but as you say, it may mm. sound like motherhood and apple pie, but at least apple pie is eaten. Uh, the motherhood and apple pie, as you call it, of the report, repeats and develops themes that have been there for over 20 mm. years, not in any one party, but have never been implemented. And Archbishop, what would you say to people that might say to you, this isn't your job, this is not your job, this is a political leadership issue? not a religious leadership issue. I would say caring for people is very much my job, is very much mm. the, the role of the church, and is taught us in every religious tradition and in humanism 
and is very much what Christ says. And also in the report, you also say we must value those who provide care, paid and unpaid. In practical terms, I think what you're saying there is that you'd like to see care workers paid more. Care work has to be seen as a valuable profession in its own right, mm. with a career structure and the possibility of development and growth and higher pay, and carers should not be there on the cheap. Mm. What they're doing is essential. Mm. We don't say, you know, oh well, we could get away with paying nurses the bare minimum wage. We don't say that because we know health matters. We do say it too often with people we depend on, but care, carers, it's a very skilled job. So you feel that they should have a pay more aligned to nursing and nurse and others in the care and profession? I think there should be the development of a career in care where you can mm. progress, get more qualifications if you want, work part-time, work full-time, as there are in so many other areas of, that are essential to our common life. And Archbishop, if, you, if I may, I'm going to ask you um, something about another subject because in the report you talk about ending discrimination, but you've also been accused yourself of discrimination against LGBT people. And I think there was a, a demonstration outside yesterday where you went to talk to people. Now, it's 10 years ago today that same-sex marriage bill was passed in the House of Commons. And here we are with the church refusing to back gay marriage. You've personally refused to bless same-sex marriage. Is there an issue of credibility here that on the one hand you're asking for inclusion and better care for the elderly and people in our communities in society, whilst on the other hand you're discriminating against the LGBT community? That's what people might think. That's what people might think. I accept that's what they, people might think and that's... Uh, they weren't talking about care last night, but the people outside demonstrating, I went out there and there's mm. Ben Bradshaw MP mm. and Jane Ozan leading and Peter Tatchell. And um, they were saying that we got it wrong as a church. There are two things there. First, we have made a huge step, which is to say that if someone is married in a civil marriage, equal marriage to someone of their own gender, um, same-sex marriage, that they can come to church and be, have that married, marriage recognised and uh, thanked for and um, uh, dedicate themselves to God and seek God's blessing in their lives. Mm. And that's something that we've never done before. And it's controversial. Um, I'm getting equal amount of flack from the other side about having compromised traditional Christian standards. Mm. The second thing is the Archbishop of York who's going to use these resources that we've published, and I, uh, and I'm not, are on exactly the same page. We welcome these resources strongly, but we have slightly different jobs. I'm also the senior bishop in one sense or another, the first mm. among equals, around the whole world, where in many countries, there are very, very different attitudes. And my job is the pastoral care and to care for and support people in 165 countries with every sort of culture and language. If you were not the first among equals, would you personally bless same-sex marriages if you were not? I support the, the use of these resources. So I, uh, it's, they, they bless so, the people in same-sex marriages. So is it marriages. hard for you not to be able to do what you personally would like to do then? No, I accept that it's part of my role. It's just the way it is. But you accept that there's a conflict there that's uncomfortable. Yeah, it's not comfortable, but, you know, the church is deeply divided over this issue. Every global church is. And the church in this country is in every denomination. We have to face the reality. It's no use wishing the world was other than it is. And just finally, uh, this weekend, we had news of the coronation. Ah, yes. Um, you will conduct the service. Yes. It's the first coronation in seven decades. It's going to be a moment of huge significance for our country. What's your hopes for the coronation? And also, is it an opportunity to heal some rifts? I think it is. 
uh, an opportunity. Um, I'm thinking of the rifts over the, that have divided our society over the last many years. My hope is that it will be an enormous celebration, that people will get together on, watch the service on the mm. telly, lots of churches and cathedrals, by the way, will have it on, uh, that on the Sunday they'll have parties and get together on the Monday, as is planned, that they will go out and do a day of volunteering mm. to help each other mm. for the common good. So huge party weekend, fun together. I hope too, that it will celebrate our past, our history, this wonderful nation, the great history we have. It will recognize both the challenges and the joys of the present, and it will give people hope for a future as a united country, working together, and where we differ, doing so well and not with hostility.